For example, if you, uh, if I may know, you are working as a, sorry, claim examiner at which department? Claims department. Okay, so he is a claim examiner. What is claim examiner? Processing the claims that people uh, give to you. Okay, so if you want to make claims, now. If he wants to talk, he is a claims examiner. If you ask him to talk about selling, he will not like to do that talk. But if you ask him, okay, today he is going to talk to us about how to submit genuine claims. No hanky-panky in your claims. He will be the master of the speech. Why? That is his bread and butter. He live for doing, uh, examining people's claim. And when he look at people's claim, he knows what is genuine and what is not, what is correct and what is incorrect, what is true and what is not true. Am I right? Yes, he's the expert. Okay? But if you ask me to look at the claims, I will just sign. Okay? You claim how much? Uh, 20 ringgit, sir. Okay, done. 20 ringgit. Tomorrow they'll come, the auditors will say, Encik Adam, why did you sign 20 ringgit for a bus ride from? Uh, from uh, Pudu Raya just to uh, uh, HUKM, 20 ringgit bus ride. Uh, did I sign? Uh, uh, that's the problem, okay? So uh, if you are an expert in your own field, then you will be good. So we can be good at delivering what we are uh, expert in, yeah? And we can learn certain favorable traits of a good speaker. So traits of a good speaker, I was talking earlier, uh, sometimes, when we have a restaurant, people put their hands there, okay? Sometimes, people just stand. Sometimes, if there's nothing like now, there's nothing between me and you, you can see me. No? Sometimes, you watch me and you, you see the actions. My hands get of moving. Sometimes, some speaker will be turning the rings on their fingers for what reasons, we do not know, okay? Some people will be doing that. They'll be talking to you, they'll be turning the rings. Why? Is this an Aladdin trick? Okay. Uh, so these are the, the traits of speakers. So we look at good speakers. If you watch our famous politicians, okay, famous politicians, we watch and we try to copy what are the good skills that they have. Um, we have several prime ministers. Who do you like best? Uh, or maybe I asked, uh, the range is too, too long. Okay. Uh, you were around uh, with... Uh, Pakla, okay? Were you? Yeah, just recently. You were around with Tun Mahathir, yes? Okay, Tun Hussein. Were you around with, during Tun Hussein? Belum, sudah ada? Not yet. Okay, okay. We stop at Tun Hussein. Right. Uh, you, you have not seen Tun Hussein. Let's, let's start with Tun Mahathir. Do you like him, uh, his speech? You like his speech? Who is better, Tun Mahathir or uh, Tun Abdullah? Tun Mahathir is better. That's your choice. Okay, all right. Uh, who is better? Tun Abdullah or uh, Datuk Sri Najib? Datuk Sri Najib is better. Okay, that's by your criteria. To me, might be different. Okay, so, but all three politicians have got some good strength in their speech. Okay, some good strength in their speech, which we can copy. Okay, which we can copy. When I started to uh, do my presentation many, many years ago, I like to copy this one character over radio. Okay, now, once he was a radio DJ, he was a radio caster, now he even is into acting. I like the voice of Patrick Theo. Have you heard of Patrick Theo? I like his voice over the radio. That sometimes I'll even take some instruments to try to copy his voice. Okay, uh, why? We want to follow the good sound of a speaker. But of course, we, ca we cannot imitate sounds of people's voice. It's quite difficult. But some good, good traits, uh, like Tun Hussein, I love Tun Hussein because of one particular reason. Uh, he would repeat his last few words before going to the next statement. Okay? So these are the things that we can uh, follow. And if you watch people doing presentations uh, that you like, uh, these are the things that we can pick up as well for us to train ourselves to be good speakers. Yeah? So favorable traits of a good speaker, pick them up. Um, personally, physically, orally, or even the gestures, okay? Um, 
sometimes this hands, you know, is very difficult not to move. Okay? The only way not to move is to put it behind you. But it's very uncomfortable to stand like this. But sometimes if you have your hands in front of you, to stress a point is very good as well. Okay? So uh, <clears throat> look at what, uh, what is good and what is not good. So when, having said all that, we come to the writing part of the speech. Uh, we have structures, yeah? Structure of the speech. Why do we have structure? Uh, so that when people listen to you, uh, it comes in a good order. Okay, it, it comes in a good order. Um, for example, if you are delivering um, an instruction, okay, instruction on how to apply for a passport, for example. So you must start from the beginning. What must you do to apply for a passport? What is, your, what is the criteria? You must be a, a one. Uh, uh, Malaysian, for example, uh, what's the age limit? Okay, so what is the process of applying for a passport? It must come in that sequence, yeah? So that the listeners, when they follow, they say, oh, I know, it's number one, number two, number three. It's like teaching people how to, um, how to prepare a sardine sandwich, for example. You know sardine sandwich? At this time of day, talk about sandwich is very nice, with hot tea. Okay, so, um, what must we have to prepare a sardine sandwich? You must have you must have bread, you must have sardines. What else? That's all. Okay, basic sardine sandwich, that's all. So you, you open up a can of sardine, first of all. What do you do? You go on, you go on. That is the process. When people follow the process, they should be able to come up with a beautiful sardine sandwich for tea shortly. Okay? All right. So that will help listeners to follow. Uh, we'll also increase attention span of listeners. Um, I used to do, um, what do we call that? Oh, it's, it's out of my mind now. Um, you know, when we get children to do uh, uh, paper, paperwork. Oh, origami, thank you very much. Origami, yeah? So we give them instruction, they start folding. You give instruction, they start folding. Following the sequence, they come up with a beautiful object. So if our instruction is not structured in that manner, it will not come up successfully. Okay? That is a good way. Thank you for the word. Origami. Um, increase attention span of listeners. If they follow the sequence, they will concentrate at your speech. Improve coherence and co cohesiveness of the speech. Basically, what it means is the flow. Okay, from one aspect to the other will be very, very nice. Okay, you talk about A, it goes to B, it goes to C. That's the coherence and cohesiveness of the speech. Um, basic structure, hang on, yeah, shortly, don't worry. Uh, the opening introduction, this is what you do. Normally, the opening instruction is to uh, inform audience what you're going to do. Muslims normally start any session with a simple salam, okay, normally. Others, there are many ways to start. We'll see if we get there shortly. Middle body is to present the content. Um, the conclusion is to sum up and finish. This is the basic structure of a speech, okay? Um, one, two, and three, that's, that's there. Um, opening, whatever you do, is to establish rapport with listeners. So that, okay, hello, are you with me? Hello, yes, yes, yes. Okay, now we are together. That is a very simple case, okay? But in an official, a formal presentation, of course, we do not say that, okay? The audience are people that we respect. So if I would like to talk about economy today, I'll say, okay, did, did you uh, follow the budget session yesterday? Did you? No? Nobody interested in the budget? Oh my goodness. You don't like the budget? You, you do. Yeah. So what aspect of the budget did you listen to? 